There's one device that I put on every single track and every single song I work on. It's my BF channel strip. It's got some controls that I use very often so that I don't have to keep reprogramming and wasting time. And in fact, every time I create a new audio or MIDI track, it shows up as the default track. So I'm going to bring out some drums here from my Spain Adventure Ableton Live Pack for my music production club. And this is for our monthly music mission. Big, heavy, thick drums. And within this rack, I've got a low pass filter to cut out the high frequencies, something I do often on tracks. Got resonance for that. I've also got a high pass filter that cuts out the high frequencies. I'll open this up so you can see what's going on. We're just cutting the high frequencies, and if I want to give a little boost, I got the resonance. Got the low pass right here. So often I'm making room in my tracks for like bass and stuff like that. So maybe not on drums, but on a lot of tracks I cut out the bass. So this is really handy to have. It's got a compressor too. So just some of the main controls I need for a compressor are right here. Attack so I can let some of that impact through. A little compression on these already very compressed drums. I shared this device a while back, but I've made some improvements to it. And one of those improvements is some gain from Saturator. So if we want a little extra punch to these drums, we can turn up this gain right here. And if you have Live 12.1, you've got this new updated Saturator, so it sounds even better. Right? And I've also got volume, and this volume is used for automation. So I can do this. And let me explain to you what I mean here. Let's say I've got this drum beat on a track here. We'll spread it out a bit, right? As I'm working on this track, I might want to put some automation on the volume. So I could draw in some automation with the pencil tool right here. And then my volume is being automated. But what happens if I want to keep that automation movements, but I want to raise the volume of the track overall? Well, as soon as I click on the fader here, I lose the automation. It gets overwritten. So automating the volume in live is not really a great idea. I'm going to delete this. A better way to do it is to automate the volume on a utility. So if I now go to this control, which is mapped to my utility, I can draw in some of that same like automation stuff I had before. I'm going to create a new automation lane, and we will select the track volume. So now I've got all the automation written on this volume control, which allows me to then adjust the relative volume using the fader like you normally would. So if I'm mixing a song and I want the drums a little bit louder in general, I can raise them here, but I'll still get all that automation that I programmed in over here. It's a much better way to do your automation. So this rack is on every single track I create. And in fact, I'll show you, I'll create a new audio track and there it is right there. Another thing I've done on this default audio track is I've reduced the volume of the fader to negative six. And this is inspired by a conversation I had with Elephant on the music production podcast. And he talks about how he gets so much headroom in his mixes. I was really impressed with his session. He had so much headroom. He wasn't blasting up to the red on his master fader. Lots of headroom. So his songs had lots of dynamics. And this is what he was talking about. I guess what you'd call an old school approach to, to mixing where I generally sort of always try and keep a bunch of headroom um also on a actual practical note what i find at least when i'm mixing is i always uh generally set my the volume faders on my tracks to somewhere between like minus 12 and minus 6 for actual like headroom on the fader itself because yeah. if i'm mixing and I'm, I'm something like oh i want the drums to be a bit louder but actually now the drums are at like plus 60 db on the mixer then i've got to like turn everything else down and then turn the drums up so more from that point of view is I always just like to leave myself room on the actual fader itself to be able to turn it up if I need to. So in order to make sure that I kind of keep myself honest with my volumes, I've just got my default track set to negative six. So every time I make a new audio track or a new MIDI track, I've got both the channel strip and I've got my volume set to negative six. Now, if you want to use this method for yourself, I highly recommend it. Just when you open this project, right click and do save as default audio track now live is going to save that in your user library under defaults under creating tracks under audio tracks and under midi tracks as well so if you just drag this on here you can see what your default is and this is what mine looks like i think that's a cool way to have a new track open it's got the tools that i use a lot in mixing so i don't i'm not constantly grabbing my eq8 
finding it here, setting up the low pass or the high pass, you know, all this stuff. I, I don't have to do that every time. It saves me a few seconds here and there. And if you think about the way few seconds add up over the course of, say, a year, and how many tracks do you make? And how many times do you do these same things over and over again? You might be saving yourself hours over the course of a year. So it's little things like this that allow us to get more stuff done when we're actually working. And I think this is a great way to do it. So if you want this for yourself, you can head to my site, brianfunk.com, and download this channel strip for free. And it's this whole project. And you can right-click and make this also your default audio track. Speed things up, make more music, have fun, and have a great day. Thanks for watching.